Ciao guys, Vincent Feinecht and again. Welcome again to uh, my YouTube channel and uh, Juventus have done a lot the last weekend, the last few weeks and uh, they've got a big week coming up so I thought it was uh, again time for another video so we've got a lot to, a lot to talk about um, so let's get to it. First the Sassuolo game on Saturday um, it was a very beautiful game to watch um, I'm not sure I've seen many better first halves from Juventus the past few years um, Ibala and Pjanic with Pjanic of course making his Juventus deep debut um, Higuain starting for the first time Lemina coming in as the Regista, Pjanic playing as a box-to-box -box player uh, rather than a Regista which was surprising because everyone was thinking that re that Pjanic was going to start alongside uh, as a Regista alongside uh, Kedira and Asamoah but Allegri opted to play Pjanic in a more offensive role uh, with Lemina as the in front of the defense and it worked very well um, Pjanic was clicking uh, with Dybala of course which was um, expected uh, as we saw them play a few games in preseason and you, s you see the guys are on the same level um, football IQ wise but also technical wise uh, they are very good in the combination so um, Dybala did play deep once again um, he did play higher on the pitch, um, which you can you could see in his uh, in his heat maps. Uh, he didn't drop deep that much, uh, like he did against Fiorentina and Lazio, which was problematic uh, because uh, it hurt Juventus' offensive power. But this time, Pjanic and Kedira was, especially Pjanic, was helping in that regard because Dybala could ask uh, the ball very deep in midfield in a very free free flowing role. Um, I wrote a piece on uh, eurofantasyleague.com that he was playing a free role like Messi at Barcelona I'm not saying he is the new Messi but he, sh he hinted that he could be a kind of player like um, like Leo um, and he showed it at Sassuolo he was all over the pitch left, right, deep uh, very high in, in uh, even in front of the Higuain sometimes um, dropping deeper than Kedira and Pjanic so it was really fun to see fun to see he was enjo enjoying himself uh, with his bursts of speed his, uh, his dribbles uh, his combination with Pjanic uh, Kedira uh, who was my man of the match um, just in front of Dybala um, Kedira was amazing again running into open spaces creating spaces for others creating space for others um, like Higuain, uh, like Pjanic and uh, offensively Juve were clicking um, just on all cylinders, full gas all game which I really like the mentality to uh, really kill off an opponent of course they did it in 27 minutes with Higuain scoring two goals you can feel there was some not critique, of, there was a critique that he was too fat but you can see the Higuain is, is already top fit again um, but it was also um, the notion that uh, Higuain was not had to adjust to a 3-5-2 system which you replace um, because he became a star at Real Madrid and Napoli in the 4-3-3 system but you saw against <laughs> you saw on Saturday that um, Higuain is such a killer striker He's a top-notch striker, he's a world-class striker. If you want to believe it or not, I'm not saying he's a Lewandowski or a, or a Ronaldo or a Aguero even, but Higuain belongs in the conversation as one of the top five strikers in the world. So, um, And he showed it. He had a kill. The second goal was nice with, I know, the scissor kick, the volley, but the first goal was the most impressive one, in my opinion. Um, he, he made a great run to get himself free and then his shot at goal was unstoppable so uh, from a pretty difficult angle so um, great Higuain 
uh, great to see him um, at full strength um, and adding that killer striker to Juve's, uh, Juve's lineup which they have missed for a long time um, but again the Kedira man of the match gave, also gave the assist for the second goal um, great game overall um, the only thing I want to uh, I also said it in my blog for Football Italia it's you can't always you can't say you will play the perfect game um, even Allegri said it they were good for 30 minutes and then they made a couple of mistakes so I like that mentality so it was a very good game but you can't just rest on that and be like okay we're we're there yet and you are not there yet uh, Gigi Buffon even made a mistake so uh, hopefully it's, and probably it's, it's it's only one of the season but um, and also Lichtstein had to save a shot from Politano, which was uh, Sassuolo's uh, best player. It was very enjoyable to watch. Um, so Lichtstein had to make a save. They could have conceded more than one goal. and But they also could have scored, and they sh Juve should have scored uh, five or six goals. They have to take their chances more, um, because now it was a game... Juve, was dom Juve were dominant, but it still wasn't done until the final whistle, and that's my only critique. For, 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 um, but uh, it was a very good game by Juve, so, and a pretty uh, confidence boost for the Sevilla game, but more about that later. First, um, a bit about Inter, um, which who clashed with Juventus on Sunday. Um, Juventus have beaten Fiorentina and Lazio already and Sassuolo which of course uh, I said in my Juventus uh, season preview that if they started with a 12 with 12 points from those four games so Fiorentina at home, Lazio away, Sassuolo at home and Inter away that Juve are ready to just go all out and, and, and take the, the Scudetto um, pretty early this season um, because Marquisio is still out. Um, Higuain has made his first start now. Pjanic has made his debut or um, just on Saturday. So they're not even going. They're not even even used to playing with each other. Um, I mean, they're not at the at the highest level they want to be. So they're still searching for their their best form. Um, but they have played. They have played, don't get me wrong, they have played very good games. Um, they were de uh, good against Fiorentina, decent against Lazio, very good against Sassuolo. If they beat Inter, they have 12 points from, from four games. The perfect start to the Serie A season. If they could beat Sevilla in the in the midweek on uh, on Wednesday, I mean, it's, a, it's the perfect start. But Juventus still have room to grow this season with all the new players coming in. Um, so they're not at the top level, which they shouldn't be. They should be at the top level, in my opinion, in uh, February, March, April, when the Champions League gets uh, in the knockout stages. So that's what I mean. Um, but starting perfect on a perfect uh, basis would be amazing, considering the opposition uh, they faced in Serie A. Um, Juve have not lost against uh, Inter since November 2012 when they lost at home 3-1 since they have won four times draw uh, gained a draw on three occasions in Serie A because they lost in the uh, um, they lost 3-0 of course after 90 minutes in the Coppa Italia um, but in Serie A they haven't lost since 2012 um, Juve are on a roll Everyone is fit except Marquisio. Meanwhile, Inter are trying to find a, their identity under their new coach, Frank de Boer. They have used three different lineups so far. Uh, the 3-5-2, 4-3-3 and a 4-2-3-1. Uh, against Pescara on uh, Sunday, which was a very difficult game for them once again. Pescara, very fun to watch. Um, Still believe they're going they're going down they're going to be relegated because their defense is it's not bad but it's just not good enough their offense is very talented they will score a lot of goals but Caprari is a baller um, 
and they showed it against Inter um, which on one point they did one dribble um, and which resulted in a shot against the bar and when he did the dribble I'm not getting excited too much I'm, I'm pretty I'm a pretty uh, uh, cool guy on that regard but when he did that dribble I was like whoa that is some really cool stuff so Caprari um, if you get a chance to watch Pescara watch him um, because he's fun to watch um, but Inter in the end two times two goals by Icardi um, which who saves Inter <laughs> uh, who has saved Inter on more than one occasion um, and he did it again with a goal in the, la the second goal in the in the extra time so uh, Inter deserved to win um, if it was a draw Pescara could have earned the draw uh, could deserve a draw but in the end I felt Inter was didn't win undeservedly um, but still they are searching for their identity they're, they're not there yet they have to click Joao Mario made his debut I'm not convinced by him especially not for 45 million um, I think he's a decent player but he's definitely not a star player ever Banega who came for free is much important um, was way more important to Inter than uh, than Mario but Mario is coming in can play next to Medel in defensive midfield uh, which allows Banega to play behind Icardi with Perisic Candreva on the left and right, right wings um, if they play these this four 2 3 1 or 4 with, 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 the, with Perisic and um, Candreva really high of the pitch, which is going to cause some problems for the 3 5 2 for, uh, for Juve. Um, I've already said it a couple of times that the 3 5 2 has one weakness, which is when um, opposing teams play the 4 3 3 or a 3 man attack. Um, with high with wings offensive wings staying very high up the pitch um, of course if Alves and Sandro if they play um, really do their job and keep running on the wings uh, they can counter it um, for example Italy did it uh, against Spain in the European Championships so um, it is counterable the 43 but I would still believe Inter will play a decent game they will make it difficult on Juve um, offensively but the problem with Inter this season has been their mediocre defense I'm not sure what's going on because it's pretty much the same defense as last season um, their full backs are very poor but also in, in Miranda is trying to save uh, the Nerazzurri's defense but um, they've conceded four goals in three games um, if if Santon, D'Ambrosio or even Nagatomo are going to go up against Dybala uh, with Alves, uh, Sandro, with Pjanic going up and down the field um, I still believe it will, a, will be a small Juve victory I believe a, a, a 2-1, maybe 3-1 uh, in the end um, but Inter, it will be a real test because Inter, also for the Champions League, because Inter have those high and very good uh, offensive wingers um, who could cause Juve's 3-5-2 problems. It's a, a very good uh, test, in my opinion, in Serie A, but also for the Champions League. So, Talking about the Champions League, Sevilla coming up. Sevilla are a very good team. Um, they have lost a lot of quality with uh, Kitschowiak, with Gamero, for example. Um, but uh, they have Sampaoli, of course, as their new coach, um, with Emery going to PSG. Um, they are not as good as the past three seasons when they won the Europa League, in my opinion. But they are still a very quality team. Very, I saw the um, the the UEFA final or Super Cup against uh, Real which they should have won um, Franco Vasquez was very good he's 
driving in a attacking midfield role which is very fun to watch I hope he gets a chance uh, from Ventura with the Azzurri um, they're playing or they did have played two games with a 4-1-4-1 lineup so very offensively with Nzanzi in front of the defense they got Nazri, Vasquez, uh, Ganzo and then Correa the former Sampdoria man behind Ben Yedder um, so they play very offensively again with the high wingers so are you going to switch from a 3-5-2 to a 4-3-3 or 4-3-1-2 lineup I believe Allegri will because he wants to play with four with a four man defense especially in Europe so believe I believe he will play it um, I'm not sure how he's going to play um, Probably with uh, Asamoah, uh, Lemina, Kedira in front of the defense, and then Pjanic behind uh, Dybala and uh, and Higuain. That's my guess. Um, but he he has to play it because he wants to win with uh, he wants to win the Champions League with the four man defense with that lineup. So he has to play it. And the Sevilla game is a perfect game to begin with because Juve have the tendency to uh, to not start off well the Champions League with a pretty much mediocre group stage they finished second last season in the, in the group stage which uh, by losing at Sevilla um, drawing two times against Borussia and Gladbach so maybe the Sevilla game is just a very good game to begin with because Sevilla is the best opponent in the group so they can really start um, by getting that win by getting by beating a good team in the Champions League so um, they also should topple their group. Um, Lyon got beaten by A Gent, uh, the Belgian champion last season. So um, they lost Fekir again to uh, their best player, in my opinion, to an injury. So Lyon should be two wins. Um, but they're not an easy team because Lyon are, are a decent team. So, um, but Juve should just beat them. And okay, Zagreb are the weakest, the weak link in the group. So they should. They are tough at home. They beat Arsenal last season at home, um, but lost to Bayern also. So they should just uh, run over them. But I would uh, advise Allegri to play Marco Piaccia in a 4 3 3 system. Why not? It's a perfect game if you play Zagreb at home or on the road, it doesn't matter. It's a perfect game uh, or the opportunity to test a real or a pure 4-3-3 lineup with one striker and then two wingers um, and I hope he plays Piaccia against his former team I believe he will be very motivated to uh, to show himself against uh, against the team that uh, that made him make so um, then overall also the favorite Juventus are one of the four favorites clear-cut favorites in my opinion with uh, of course Barcelona Real Madrid and Bayern Munich I also count as a dark horse Manchester City uh, with Pep Guardiola. Um, they've been very impressive this season um, and they have the players to do it, in my opinion, especially if Vincent Company comes back in defense. Um, I got one Twitter, fo Twitter follower who asked me, um, I'm, who said I'm a bit worried about the pressure. Um, you were, uh, you we are facing in the, in the, to win the Champions League or perform in the Champions League well they put that pressure on themselves by talking about the Champions League all the new players coming in talked about winning the Champions League um, and it's Juve's time Juve have all the ingredients all the players the tactics the coach um, the fans I mean they have all the ingredients to win the Champions League and if they are not aiming for the Champions League at this point I'm not sure when they should do so. They can win the Champions League, and if you can win the Champions League, you have to go it uh, for 100%. So then to end, because we've been on 90 minutes already, I want to say something in short about Grigoris Castanos, um, who um, popped up in the English press press this uh, this week because Manchester United uh, should. Or could be interested in signing him um, from the Juventus Primavera. 
He's been a star at the Primavera A team uh, last season. He scored five goals, gave two assists. He's 18 years old at the moment. Um, he's from Cyprus. Um, and I, I saw him play or make his first start for Cyprus against Belgium in the uh, World Cup qualifiers. Belgium did win uh, 3-0 um, in Cyprus. Um, but Castanos really impressed me. He played a very good game um, against a tough opponent. Um, he played, Cyprus played in a 4 2 3 1, and he played behind the striker as an attacking midfielder, which is his best position. But he also he did switch a lot, he, he did play more of a box to box role because he also um, did drop deep to ask the ball. Um, to claim the ball actually and which is pretty quality uh, pretty decent from a 18 year old um, he demanded the ball he wanted the ball uh, in possession he did give a, com a couple of killer passes uh, one was uh, a really pillow-esque pass from the midfield or right at his own half uh, which set up a very good chance for Cyprus, the, but the striker didn't control it very well. But then again, if he would do that at Juventus to, to Higuain or to Dybala, it would be a goal. Um, his, he really, his work rate was very, very well. He ran up and down the pitch um, like it was nobody's business. He kept going. He even tried to nutmeg Marwan Fellaini. Um, it didn't work, but you, you can feel the confidence in the kit and. I feel he could, he has a chance to possibly make it at Juventus. I'm not sure what they're going to do with him next season. Probably loan him out. Hopefully, to a team like Sassuolo or Empoli. I think he could drive there and maybe uh, in the future play for Juve. So, very good news on that regard. So, that was it. 22 minutes. Um, but we had a lot, of, lot to talk about. I'm going to do a new video, also a rant video on Lukaku and Pogba, so stay tuned for that. Um, so let's all watch uh, Sevilla, the Sevilla game on Wednesday. Let's hope Juve go out and kill off, um, kill off Sevilla with a, with a good game, a good performance and a win. And then of course the Inter game, the Derby d'Italia, always exciting, so Forza Juve.